when Umar, the second caliph after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, visited Jerusalem. He happened to be in the city's largest church when the time for prayer had come. At that moment, the bishop offered him the chance to pray in the church. The caliph Umar replied, No, for if I pray in this church today, my followers may annex it after I am gone and no longer able to protect your rights. When caliphate exists on the precepts of justice, consideration for the rights of others, and an overall deep will for peace, as defined by the Quran and the Prophet himself, then caliphate has the ability to serve as a grand force for good in the world. Well, one of the things I enjoy about coming to the peace symposiums that the Ahmadi community holds uh, is to listen to His Holiness. I always find him inspirational. I think tonight his message was even more important than ever. Uh, and I felt the way that he talked about the threat of ISIS in Iraq and Syria and the way he showed that ISIS has nothing to do with the faith of Islam, I thought was extremely uh, persuasive. His Holiness gave a speech that was incredibly powerful, that set out all of the claims that uh, violent groups like ISIS made and then totally demolished them in terms of what the Quran actually says. I think for a lot of people sat in the room, um, it helped them really understand uh, what true Islam is actually about and how this message of peace is really at the heart of it. The Holiness, I just thought, it's incredible because you, all the things he was saying were going through my mind and I could actually relate to nearly everything that he said, uh, which actually I think probably surprised me for some reason. I don't know why. I just found it very, very moving. I'm really pleased I came. I can't say more than that. He is known by world leaders for his humanitarian efforts and his mission for world peace, anchored by his famous slogan of love for all, hatred for none. He has traveled extensively to spread the message of peace and to remind everyone to respect the rights of other human beings. During these tours, His Holiness has met world leaders from the Far East to Europe, from North America to Africa, discussing the economic, social, and political problems facing the world today, and how to create peace and justice in the world. He has also met religious and community leaders in order to share common values and core ideals universal to all religions and cultures, with a view to improving the moral state of mankind and creating an atmosphere of love and affection from young to old, he compassionately listens to the ordinary man, regardless of race, color, or religion. He has personally initiated social projects and schemes to alleviate poverty and human suffering. His concern is not just about the well-being and moral state of the members of the Ahmadiyya community, but of the great human suffering of mankind at large. For His Holiness, the slogan, love for all, hatred for none, really comes to life. And I have borne witness to His Holiness waging a jihad, a jihad of love, opposing it, the jihad of the sword with the jihad of the pen and of love itself. And it is an honor to welcome you, Your Holiness. Your leadership has made you a figure of global prominence and you have become a guide for millions of Muslims worldwide. Your Holiness, it is undoubtedly a reflection of the blessing that you bring to this capitalism. I want to express gratitude for the privilege of appearing here in front of Your Holiness and this assemblage. We're really honored you're here. Uh, I was saying earlier that you brought the House and the Senate together. We should have you here more often. And we're grateful. I would like to pay an additional tribute 
to the work being done by our Māoris in raising standards in Africa and particularly in education. I was reflecting when I had opportunity to learn more, Your Holiness, about your service, uh, particularly about your contribution to the people of Ghana in the late 1970s and early 80s. And it reminded me of something remarkable that happened here in our great state a few years ago in Death Valley. You may even recall this. In the winter of 2004, there were seven inches of rain that fell on Death Valley. A few months later, the spring of 2005, the entire valley was carpeted with flowers. And it was just a reminder that Death Valley wasn't dead, it was dormant. It was waiting for the seeds of possibility to be sown. And I think about, Your Holiness, the extraordinary work you did in Ghana, particularly your agricultural commitment, bringing wheat to the people of Ghana, had never been done in the history of that country. You sowed the seeds of possibility and it's a reminder to all of us as we deal with the issue of ignorance and poverty and disease as you have committed your life to, that when the right conditions come along, success is irreversible. It's inevitable. Success simply will find its way. For all the events you go to, you will you will seldom see the golden key presented. Today you will see the golden key presented to you, Your Holiness. I've seen um, four keys to the city given out in my 12 years as a city council member. And this is a very special honor indeed that is reserved for the most special of visitors. This hand shook the hand of His Holiness. I was just thrilled. Today, this man, Mirza Masrur Ahmed, worldwide head of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, is the Caliph of Islam. His followers, numbering the tens of millions, spread over 200 countries across the world making him the leader of the largest single group of Muslims in the world who follow one Imam. The Caliph, who has spoken at Capitol Hill, the British Parliament, the European Parliament, and has held court with dozens of world leaders, is celebrated as a champion of peace by leaders across the world. In this we are allied with His Holiness, a courageous champion of religious freedom and of peace. We especially applaud the, cali the, the cali Caliphate for denouncing those who pervert faith by claiming it as a justification for violence. However we define God, it is wrong to kill in His name. Today, when we, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat, raise the slogan of love for all and hatred for none as a means to establish global peace, we do so directly in fulfillment of the teachings of the Holy Quran and the practice of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him. I will, God willing, always continue to carry out my task and my responsibilities of promoting peace, tolerance, justice and compassion to the corners of the world. I will continue to tell all people that in order to be relieved of the pain and suffering that we face today, we must adopt true justice and equality. 